of people are scared of snakes, and you know, partly that's because they don't really understand snakes and you know their behaviour and habitat. And that's what I wanted to cover, you know, today is uh, you know look at um, some of the venomous snakes in Malaysia. In this video, we'll look at the uh, neurotoxic venomous snakes, the cobras, the crates, and the coral snakes. And then I'll do another video on the hematoxic snakes, i.e. the I'm vipers here in Malaysia. So today I've come down to KL to the National Zoo. I'm here with Dr. Calden, who's an emergency physician who specializes in uh, you know, dealing with venomous bites, particularly snakes. And you know, as I say, we're here at the zoo, being very helpful in terms of you know, getting us some uh, access to the snakes so we can film them and show you what they look like. The King Cobra is the largest venomous snake in the world and one that you know, really scares a lot of people. I mean, it can reach astonishing lengths of about you know, 18 foot, and when standing, can reach a height of five foot. Now, its venom is mainly neurotoxic, and although it's not the most potent venom of the cobras, the king cobra you know, can deliver large quantities of venom. And this is something that's unusual about king cobra, is that when it bites, it tends to bite and hold on and pump venom into its victim. It's a snake that's you know, known for its intelligence, and is the only snake, uh, venomous snake in Malaysia that builds a nest. So is the king cobra as aggressive as people say it is? Uh, no, king cobra are generally uh, not as aggressive. Uh, but if they have a nest, uh, they will actually protect the nest. It's the only snake, right, that builds a nest? Yeah, yeah. They, they are the only venomous snake that builds nests. Which is got, on the and, ground? Yes, or, and yeah. got the nest. Right. Um, so both uh, male and female uh, king cobra would be generally be around near the nest. And if someone suddenly happens to come across the nest without noticing uh, it being a king cobra nest, uh, they might uh, you know, be attacked by a king cobra. But the cobra would try and make them yeah, go away. Yeah, it's just purely for defense purposes. Right. Uh, so we have to understand uh, the situation and back away, right. uh, move away from the snakes. So if you were walking along a trail and a cobra, king cobra is, is behaving aggressively, there may be a nest further along the trail, and you should just turn around and go home. Right, yeah. yes. <laughs> uh, the main thing is actually not to um, um, aggravate the situation by throwing sticks or throwing stone or trying to uh, shout at them. Uh, and all this will be taken as uh, aggressive behavior towards the king cobra. Uh, so they will retaliate. So the best thing is just to keep still and let the king cobra move away uh -huh. and you back off. So the other species of cobra here in Malaysia are the, the, the black splitting cobra and the, the monocle cobra. Yes. I mean, do they behave differently to the king cobra? Or? Yeah, um, the king cobra, as I said, they will bite and hold on to you, where the other two are mainly uh, bite and release. So like a strike. A strike and yeah. release. Um, but as you know, the spitting cobra, as the name suggests, it yeah. can spit venom. And they spit the venom into your eyes, basically. They are specifically targeting uh, the facial area, mm -hmm. so that uh, we will be blinded, uh, and uh, and basically giving it time to go away, right. rather than actually blinding us and and strike us at the same it's time. It's defensive. Yeah, yeah, it's mostly defensive, and you you will find that some of these uh, spitting cobras are so-called virgin spitters. It's the first time that they spit. Uh, they don't use the spit. Uh, they don't spit to kill their their prey. Uh -huh. So uh, they still bite to kill the prey uh, and deliver the venom. Uh, but spitting behavior is purely for uh, defense uh, purposes. And and the monocled cobra. Is there anything specific about the monocled cobra? Yeah, monocled cobra uh, doesn't spit. Uh -huh. uh, some people think they spit, but it's because of. Um, their, their hissing is louder. Their blowing um, of uh, from the lungs uh -huh. is louder, and sometimes the, the the venom drips. And when you have this blowing of the, uh, the accidentally air from the lungs, spit. yeah, <laughs> people think that they spit too, but they uh, don't. Uh, um, they don't have a specific um, apparatus uh, uh, as a spitting cobra has. So uh, they are they are. They will rear up as well, uh, and they will have this blowing noise uh, warning sign. So again, uh, we have to move away, or uh, stay still and let it feel relaxed. It will move away, and we move to safety. 
I mean, for a lot of these terrestrial snakes, I mean, staying alert in the jungle to the sound or, you know, the, yeah. or movement yeah. is obviously quite important. Well, the issue sometimes is we don't know where they are and we tend to step on them. Right. Uh, in that situation, it's purely accidental. And if you got bitten at a time, uh, the first bite usually is a warning bite. Uh, and not all bites will deliver full uh, venom into you. So these are what we call as dry bites. And in terms of their behavior, if they're terrestrial snakes? Yeah, uh, almost all of these cobras are actually terrestrial in nature. I mean, they are on the floor of the forest. Um, so uh, again, they are widespread in Malaysia, in Peninsula Malaysia, uh, and also in Sabah and Sarawak. Uh, where can we find them? Well, basically where there are food for them. Uh, so if you do find uh, in your housing area, it's because most likely you are breeding rats. Yeah. Uh, um, and the other issue about uh, king cobra uh, is they eat other snakes. So if you get rats, <laughs> right, you, you get, get some snakes, snakes there. And then you get the king cobras yeah. eating the yeah. snakes. Yeah. So right. yeah, it's all from food chain, right. uh, supply chain. So. Um, if you manage to keep our houses clean, uh, then we will have reduced risk of having snakes around our house, or even rats. And just from filming the snakes, I mean, my, my feeling, I don't know if this is true, but the, the yeah. spitting cobras seem to be more aggressive than yeah. some yeah. of the other snakes. Apparently, they are very, very sensitive to movement. Right. Uh, so, um, and that's how they get their accuracy from, yeah. uh, specifically targeting movements. Uh, so, uh, they will actually um, rear up uh -huh. uh, and make some noise, a hissing noise, uh, and that is, uh, I mean, it's a, a good warning sign for you to move away right. and not to instigate it, uh, make the situation worse uh, by, you know, uh, actively throwing things and so on. So again, uh, common sense sets in. Uh, if you get that situation, just stay still, let it relax and when it feels not threatened it will just uh, go down uh, to the normal uh, posture and it will move away so they're beautiful snakes <laughs> uh, they are they are mostly used uh, in snake shows because of their dramatic uh, behavior and uh, and this tend to scare people more rather than actually taking it as a positive sign uh, to move away. So although the cobras look quite frightening when they raise their hood, yeah. I mean actually we should be grateful because it makes it easy to spot them. Exactly, yeah. 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 It's very different from a viper. Right. Uh, so from these warning signs, we know that uh, we should move away. Right. Uh, but in a situation where you accidentally step on them, uh, it's difficult to say. Uh, the snake doesn't have time yeah, to... Exactly, it doesn't yeah. have time to give you warning. Um, uh, and in the jungle, where are you most likely to find them? I yeah, mean, I mean, uh, again, it's throughout the country. The, the whole of the country is uh, their uh, ecology, right? Yeah. So uh, you can find anywhere in the jungle, even in the mountainous area. Um, uh, in the housing area, because of what we have, uh, we've been feeding them. <laughs> um, uh, do you never find them on trees? Sometimes? Very, 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 very unlikely to be on trees. Really? Yeah. Uh, because they're mainly terrestrial. Right. Um, in plantations. Yeah. Uh, I mean. Because uh, of rats. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Some actually uh, purposely release uh, these snakes to control the pests, right. uh, which eats the fruits right. uh, in their garden. So they tend to already understand the behavior of these snakes. Right. Uh, and utilize them for biological weapons. <laughs> so, um, I mean, that is for those who understand. Yeah. But as we agreed earlier, people, you know, for the sake of excitement and show, they use this uh, known behavior to scare people. The, you know, the, yeah. the rising yeah, of the group, Which is yeah. not right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You, you, as we have experienced ourselves, yeah. we really need to. Um, you know, provoke, the, provoke snake. the snake to get it uh, yeah. to rear up. No, it really surprised me. I mean, otherwise they just it, don't want to know. Yeah, it's, otherwise uh, it just wants to go uh, and do its own business. Yeah. You know, it doesn't want to 
attack you. The first, I think, is aggressively yeah. attacking someone. It's defensive. It's mostly defensive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's just, if you were got beaten in that situation, then it's not the snake that is at fault. Yeah. It is us. Yeah. Either because we didn't see it or because we provoked it. Absolutely, yeah. 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 Um, but in general, for people trekking in the jungle, is it correct to say that with snakes, when, uh, when the temperature is hot, to, to look for them in cool places and when it's cool to look for them yeah. in hot places. Yeah, uh, the, yes, it is true based on their uh, biology. Uh, they are reptiles, they are so called cold blooded. Uh, they require a certain amount of energy from external source. So they need to regulate yeah, their body yeah, temperature. To, yeah. yeah, it's not as like us in mammals. Right? Yeah. So indirectly, that uh, gives them a better uh, survival. Um, cap capability because they don't need food yeah, to keep themselves yeah, warm in the yeah, way that we exactly. do. Yeah. Yeah. They are more in energy efficient as compared to us mammals. Uh, but again, why do you want to look for them? No, I mean jungle? where you should so, maybe be more careful. Yeah, yeah. well, uh, if you can uh, stay away from from uh, what you call this, so you can just stay on their, your your own path. Uh -huh. It should be all right because uh, they will not stay and wait for things to uh, the cobras, cobras yeah, yeah, you know yeah. uh, they will move away they can sense your vibration well before you arrive to their place right so they will move away from the danger area uh, so i think that in that in that sense that's why we don't really uh, get as many uh, cases of cobra, of bites. cobra bites in the jungle most of the cobra bites are in the populated area or people handling snakes. Right. So uh, it's because in the jungle they have space to move around. They move away. And they can get out yeah, of your way. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. There's nothing blocking them. Mm. Whereas in the housing area, you, you get stuck in the room. You are there and they don't know where to go. It's four walls around them. Right. You can imagine uh, yourself in that situation. They you get, get panicked, you yeah. get really aggressive and try to defend yourself. Right. Uh, it's very different in the wild and in the. Um, residential area. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, with the crate, I mean, one thing that really struck me when we were at Battle Cage with Aaron was yeah. that he was handling the snake that yeah. you know, actually I, I, I was quite fearful yeah. of because yeah. it's, it's, a, it's, I mean, got a very strong, potent venom. Is, is that not correct? Yeah, um, they are uh, known to be more potent than cobra. Mm. Uh, but in terms of um, the aggressiveness is perhaps less than a cobra, mm. so the chance of you getting bitten is actually less. But you still have to be careful around them. Great bites are not as painful as a bite by a viper or even the monocle cobra. Um, that's because of the composition of the venom and the size of the teeth. And they are very highly neurotoxic, so very little local effect uh, causing inflammation and pain. Uh, so you, sometimes these bites go unnoticed. Mm. Uh, you walk along a path, uh, you didn't see the snake, uh, it strikes you, uh, but you don't feel anything other than just like a bee sting, uh, or like mm. a small pinch. Uh, but uh, the effect can uh, manifest uh, within half an hour mm. or some say even less um, and again uh, you will have difficulty to uh, lift up your eyelids uh, difficulty to breathe and you die of asphyxiation mm. uh, they are mainly terrestrial meaning that they are on the ground most of the time and that's why um, if you say you go camping mm. um, you want to be off the ground yeah. Uh, like a raised bed right, or yeah, a, a hammock, hammock. Yes. Yeah, yeah. that yeah. should uh, reduce the risk of you uh, being in contact with them. Right. Uh, but my understanding with crates, I mean, because they're smaller snakes, their mouth is smaller. Is that, is that, yeah. Yeah. I mean, relatively, the, the relatively, yeah. So that if you're bikers. wearing reasonably sturdy footwear, yeah. it's unlikely they're going to really yeah. be Some able to even punch say it. it doesn't have to be a thick uh, footwear, a boot. You just wear thick uh, clothing. Uh, should, jeans yeah. or um, thick slacks yeah. uh, even if you put a padding on it's actually sufficient with uh, the crates with the crates but yeah. not necessarily with the cobras uh, yeah <laughs> if you get a big cobra the cobra they can uh. actually 
uh, pierce through the, the, the trousers. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, sturdy boots would give you, from all these snakes, all the snakes yes. give you yeah, a bit of protection. Right. Yeah. And the coral snakes, where, I mean, I, what's the difference between a coral snake and a crate? Right, this is a mis... Uh, um, I get a lot of uh, questions about coral snakes where people think that when, as the name suggests, coral, they sea think snake. it's in the sea, yeah. which is not true. Uh, coral snakes are uh, actually found on land and they are terrestrial or even some are partially burrowing under the uh, dead leaves uh, or subfossorial. So uh, again, coral snakes are smaller, much smaller than... I mean, they're about this big, is that right? Uh, yeah, relatively yeah. about half a feet or one feet long. One foot long. One right. foot long. So um, the difference is uh, their, their venom is most likely more potent as compared to a crate and uh, what they lack in volume uh, what they uh, what what they have is also a very long uh, venom gland uh -huh. so stretch a long way down to their uh, some shape to their inner uh, but uh, meaning they, they can store quite a lot of venom in right. them yeah, even though for relatively small size um, I have not come across a uh, coral snake envenomation yet in Malaysia, in Malaysia. Uh, but there were some anecdotal reports. Uh, so we're still really not sure what uh, is actually uh, the full effect of the, the envenomation. Uh, and we don't have um, the antivenom specific for coral snakes. Mm. But you so have rare. to really try to get bitten by a coral snake. Oh, yeah. Yeah. of course, yeah. you have to really, you know pick up and you know um, and find some and skin find that's small yeah. small enough for it to get his mouth around. Yeah. Yeah.